Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Trinity Exploration Production PLC Interim Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll and your participation, as usual, will be mostly appreciated by the company. I'd now I'd like to hand over to Chairman Nick Clayton. Good afternoon, sir. Well, good afternoon, uh, Mark, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, and welcome to the um, interim investor um, update following our results uh, earlier this morning. Um, as Mark has already uh, said, my name's Nick Clayton. I'm the Chairman of Trinity. Uh, and I'm, I'm joined today by Jeremy Bridgelal Singh, um, our CEO. So, without further ado, um, let's um, move through the um, presentation. Um, the first slide that you see in front of you really just summarizes uh, the agenda, what we're going to talk about today. Um, first, the, uh, the key takeaways from this presentation. Um, I'm then going to hand over to Jeremy to walk us through. Uh, the key uh, aspects of the first half of 2022 results. Um, we're going to give you some uh, an update on the onshore uh, drilling program. I know that this has been uh, a keen interest for a lot of people over the last uh, several weeks. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the growth and where the board is uh, focusing its attentions uh, in terms of maximizing the value of our uh, existing um, asset base. Um, we will touch on shareholder returns. This is clearly a, um, a very important uh, time for the company or day for the company um, in announcing a uh, share buyback this morning, um, but also our intentions to articulate a capital um, allocation uh, program uh, or policy uh, in the early part of next year. Um, and then we'll summarize and just give you a, a feel for what you can expect uh, from the company um, over the uh, coming months. So in terms of the key takeaways from this presentation, I think there are, there are three core messages. Um, the first is that we've had a robust um, and uh, operating and financial performance in the first half. Um, we've clearly benefited from a very stable uh, production base. Um, and have been assisted by uh, high oil prices, which has affected our revenues and cash flows uh, during the first half. Um, but these have been mitigated um, by the impact of our hedging uh, program, which uh, uh, was put in place in 2021 when our major concern was over, uh, the, uh, uh, low, uh, over a low level of oil prices. Um, and... Uh, um, which has clearly not transpired during the early part of 2022 uh, when Russia uh, decided to invade um, Ukraine. The good thing is that those hedges will run off gradually during the second half of this year, and uh, there are no hedges currently in place uh, for 2023. Um, we have some very significant uh, growth opportunities um, within the company. Um, and all eyes at the moment and our focus is on delivering uh, the onshore drilling program. Um, we've drilled two wells on prognosis, and I'll allow Jeremy to, to talk about that later in the presentation. Um, the, the two wells that uh, can help us move the needle in terms of valuation, the horizontal well and the deeper appraisal well, um, will kick off during the, next, uh, during the coming months. Um, but I think it's fair to say that our analysis of the 3D has allowed us to develop a very uh, large um, hopper of opportunities um, that we uh, will be drilling up um, over a uh, several year uh, period um, on the basis of six to eight wells a year um, over the coming years. Um, clearly, the results of the horizontal and deep appraisal well uh, will help shape our drilling program um, during 2023. Today is a very uh, important uh, milestone in the company's history. 
Um, we've been talking about shareholder returns uh, for quite a while, um, but today you will have seen that we've announced a uh, modest share buyback, but probably more importantly, our intention to articulate a capital allocation policy in the first uh, half of next year um, that is expected to involve a regular dividend um, and share buybacks or other uh, means of delivering value back to shareholders uh, dependent on uh, the level of commodity prices. But I think it's also important to say at this juncture um, that the board is, is confident that we are not going to stifle um, the growth plans uh, for the company um, over the coming years by implementing this policy. I'd like to hand over to Jeremy just to walk us through um, the next slide, which covers off the uh, first half results. Jeremy. Thanks, Nick, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Nick has touched on some of the key observations for the half one results with respect to the oil price and production. I'll touch in a little bit more detail and the RNS that we provided earlier this morning gives um, full detail on the financials and descriptions thereof. Our production year on year declined by 2%, which is a pretty low rate of decline. And in removing the PS4 asset to make it like for like assets comparison, that decline was 4%. If I look across the natural field decline, which is in or around 8 to 10%, it reflects the underlying quality of the assets that we have and a strong operational performance. The work activities that we carried out over the first half of the year were 11 recompletions, where we go into an existing well and perforate a zone or produce from a zone that hasn't produced from before. So coming up from a deeper level to a shallower level. In terms of workovers, which are going after wells that are on production and may have failed for one reason or the other, and bringing them back on production, we carried out 61 of those. We also spotted our first well, which meant that, which meant that we started drilling our first well at the end of quarter two of this year. In terms of our cost structure, our operating break-even remained relatively low on a comparable basis with the operating break-even landing at $32.4 per barrel over the course of half one of this year. We've seen an increase year on year and from half to half, largely driven by the inflationary um, pressures that everyone is experiencing, but also we have increased resourcing in order to prepare for the growth that we are anticipating to happen in the short to medium term. We've chosen to include the net cash from operating activities here, and we've shown that before hedging and post hedging. The reason for showing that is that the oil price has increased, production has remained relatively stable. And if you can compare year on year, before hedging, you can see a significant increase from three and a half million to $8.9 million before hedging. And the reason that we've included the before hedging as a metric here is to be able to illustrate that whilst half one, as Nick mentioned, the impact of the, the increased oil prices were mitigated somewhat by the impact of hedges, in half two of 2022, the hedges begin to come off and reducing the amount of production that is hedged. And in 2023, there is no hedging in place currently. We have a cash balance of $15 million on the balance sheet, as well as we expect to generate significant operating cash flow this year, which means that we are able to fund the drilling campaign that we have, the six well drilling campaign, without recourse to any external financing. The schematic that we have here shows the production over the last 18 months. And what we what we have here is the guidance that we provided for 2021 being between 31 to 2,900 barrels. That guidance remains intact and we will probably arrive at the mid range of that guidance, which is just around 3,000 barrels during the course of this year with the drilling um, that will have commenced in half, just at the end of half one and coming on to, into half sorry, we're coming into half two, with four conventional wells being drilled and brought onto production during quarter four of this year. I'll describe that in a little bit more detail on the next slide. So we will see towards the end of this year, the exit rate for 2022 increasing from in or around the 3,000 average up to between 31 to 3,300 barrels. And further to that into Q1 and Q2 of next year, when we bring on the horizontal and hopefully have a successful deeper well there's a potential for a material increase on top of that 
initial stepped increase in production. As Nick mentioned, the first two wells that we drilled encountered and delivered results as was expected. In fact, the 690 feet of pay in both primary and secondary targets across both of the wells was slightly above the pre drill expectations. So those are very encouraging. The first well was brought onto production in late August. We've observed some gas interference with the pump and therefore reducing the pump's efficiency. We are currently investigating with a view to optimize and bring that well to deliver its full potential in the next week to one week and a half. The second well was perforated during September and currently it is cleaning up and we expect that well to be fully on production again in the next week to week and a half or so. The third well in the campaign that we are about to drill is called the FR835 follow-up well and that will be done in the WD13 license area. It's a shallower well. We intend to spud around the 27th of September and drilling should take between 10 to 15 days. Once we've completed that well, the plan is to stop um, drilling with that particular rig and move to a rig with more capacity that allows us to drill deeper and drill more complex wells in preparation for the horizontal and the deeper well. The fourth well that we drill will be in the PS4 block, the block that was acquired in December of last year and will be drilled to a depth of 7,000 feet and will allow us to ensure that the rig that we are using is in good order to go and take on the horizontal well. The schedule, as you see it here, shows that the deeper well in the PS4 asset will be drilled in or around October of this year, followed by the horizontal, which will commence drilling in or around we anticipate middle of November and go through into December and hopefully be brought onto production um, into early quarter one of next year. We will then pause for between four to six weeks and commence drilling the Jacobin prospect in February of 2023. The last update that we provided, we spoke a lot about the impact of the 3D seismic. And what we identified from the 3D seismic was trying to be able to look at applying new techniques in terms of unlocking potential within our assets. And what we were trying to achieve is increasing the ratio between the capex invested and the barrels that we recovered on a per well basis. That's why this drilling campaign included not just the four conventional wells that we've drilled many of in the past, but we've also included a horizontal well and that deeper well. To refer to the horizontal well, what we are looking at here is targeting initial production rates, which are sort of in the range of between 100 to 200 barrels of oil per day. Compare this to rates of the typical conventional wells, which we see between 40 to 70 barrels per day. You can see that there's a marked or step change in the, in the initial production rates, and hopefully the amount of barrels that we recover over the life of the well. In turn, this should increase the economics or make the economics better for the horizontal wells. And you can see in the bottom right-hand side box where the IRRs and cash returns, when you compare a low angle to a horizontal well, are significantly uplifted. The deeper well that we plan to drill is going to be called the Jacobin Prospect. In the last update that we provided to the market, we came to you and we showed the, this same map on the left-hand side with our Palo Seco assets, WD-56, WD-2, and PS4, with nine areas of interest included. Subsequent to that, and where we currently stand, of those nine, three have been moved forward to drill-ready prospects. So those are prospects that have been through our internal technical teams review, as well as with the technical committee that was installed in late last year. We then ranked those prospects and the Jacobin prospect has come to the fore. As a reminder, the typical sort of, we expect to, from the Jacobin prospect to recover typically in, our, in a success case, one to five million barrels of oil in place and recover in around one to 1.1 million barrels of reserves in a success case. I can't, I mean, this is going to be drilling into an area that has been very, not drilled very significantly, and therefore it's increased risk, it's deeper, and we are taking our time in terms of ensuring that we understand the drilling plan and working with a third party company to ensure that the drilling plan is secure. We will then submit that prospect into Heritage, ensure that we have the tools on the ground for data acquisition, 
all around the items are in place, and that is what is guiding the schedule for us to commence drilling this in February of next year. Both the horizontal well and the deeper well represent greater risk, but also significantly greater reward for us, as the economic table shows down below. In addition to these, though, we have a further hopper of wells, which will allow us to have a continuous multi-year drilling plan, as Nick mentioned earlier. Following on from the, the drilling plan that I mentioned, and we spoke about the six well campaign in a fair bit of detail there, we do have a hopper that allows us to continue to drill into 2023 and beyond, and our budget planning is already contemplating this, as well as we are also considering, depending on the level of success with the deeper well, we may stop to assess and therefore decide what is the best well to drill post-drilling of the deeper well. In any case, you can expect us to be turning a bit during the course of next year and continuing the growth that we, you, will, you will see coming up at the end of Q1, quarter four of this year, sorry, and into Q1 and Q2 of next year. Galeota, we commenced a farm loan last year and then paused it pending the clarity on fiscal reform. We are still looking forward to fiscal reform as we believe that this will help unlock oil production and increase incentivized investment in Trinidad and Tobago. Nonetheless, the, we are refining the plans for Galeota based on the feedback we received also observing the market and looking at, and looking at adjusting the plan for Galeota such that we are targeting lower risk reserves in terms of the 2P reserves, as well as looking at a more CapEx mitigated schedule, thereby allowing a lower level of CapEx to be initially uh, invested in order to move the asset forward. The management team has been strengthened. We've brought on a corporate development manager in Julian Kennedy, who is also attending and joining this meeting. And Julian will lead the investor relations function of the business and will be the front-facing part of the company where it relates to investor relations going forward. He will build up, he will complement Nick and I going forward, and you'll see Julian featuring more and more in presentations such as this and meetings with investors on an ongoing basis. We've also, we will also be bringing on a development manager who will be responsible for developments such as the Trintest 2P and other developments like that as we look to bring about and bring real value to our 67 million barrels of reserves and resources currently booked. The final area that we're focusing on in the short term is on the onshore bid round, where the team is looking at the data that we've been provided with by the ministry. We are looking at the blocks that we are interested in, and this will go through a series of technical reviews and providing that we are providing that the areas of prospective our intent is to put, place a bid in early January and the award of those blocks through the process that the Ministry of Energy has guided will be given in April 2023 or 90 days post bids being, um, bids being, bids being put into the Ministry, which should be in around the, the 9th or 10th of January. The other area that has begun is the shallow water bid round, which has commenced. And this has started off with the Ministry asking for nominations of areas of interest and that's due on the 11th of October. So quite a few different growth streams. Current focus is on delivering the drilling program safely and on drilling plan and within budget. Make I'll hand over to you to go through the cash returns. Yes, sure. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I highlighted at the beginning of the presentation that today represents um, a significant milestone in Trinity's history. Um, we have announced a small buyback this morning um, and suffice it to say that uh, uh, the board believes that the shares currently are significantly um, undervalued. But I think there's an acknowledgement that um, we've got a good handle on the hedging um, situation now, which will diminish into uh, the second half. And the combination of higher production next year, no hedging, and future expectations for oil price um, delivers is set to deliver a very strong um, cash flow performance in 2023. So our objective in announcing the um, capital allocation policy next year is really to, to sharpen our capital discipline um, without compromising growth, but also to recognize that we are in a period of, I would suggest, abnormally high uh, crude oil prices, 
um, and that we have to recognize that and acknowledge that fact and return uh, some value uh, to shareholders as a consequence. So the capital allocation policy, um, I don't want to spend too much time um, going into details today, um, but, su but suffice it to say it will involve a regular dividend beginning with a maiden interim dividend this time next year and future buybacks and or special dividends that will flex uh, dependent on levels of commodity prices over and above uh, the level that we believe is sustainable on a mid-term basis. So in conclusion, um, I think there are four messages. You know, the financials and the operations are strong. Um, we have delivered a, a strong operational performance, and that will be augmented by... Uh, a stronger financial performance during the second half and into 2023 um, as our hedging instruments uh, begin to, to run off. Um, we have a significant hopper of opportunities to create value, and that is clearly our focus at the current time with the drilling program. Uh, and Jeremy has already alluded to uh, the uh, steps that we're taking to um, optimize the value of uh, Trintes and the, uh, the Galeota block. Um, we're certainly hopeful that there will be fiscal reform, um, but we're certainly not counting on it. And we're taking, it, taking uh, our lives into, a, into our own destiny um, in terms of um, our activities uh, at the current time. And as promised, we will deliver shareholder returns during the course of the next uh, 12 months. So in, in short, we are delivering, we're moving forward, and we will deliver cash returns to shareholders as we promised over the last 12 months. So that concludes uh, the presentation from, um, from our side. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to take uh, or deal with questions um, that have arisen. That's great. Nick, Jeremy, thank you very much indeed for updating investors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of, the, of your screen. But as why Jeremy and Nick take a few moments to review your questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you the recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your InvestMe company dashboard. Um, Nick, I, I haven't given you uh, any time at all, really, to, to look at the questions, but you have received a number of questions, both ahead of today's event and uh, throughout. And I wondered if I may just hand back to you to read out those questions and, where appropriate, give a response, and then I'll pick up from you at the end. Okay, so there were four uh, pre-submitted questions. Uh, the first was... Were you surprised about Capricorn putting itself up for sale rather than focusing on growth? Um, we were assuming it was going to be a good partner. Uh, will this still be the case in the future? Well, I think in simple terms, yes, we were surprised to hear, or I was surprised to hear, and we were, as a company were surprised to hear the news about Capricorn. Um, as you all know, we work very closely with Capricorn on evaluating opportunities in Trinidad um, uh, during the course of late last year and early this year. And we were confident that Capricorn would have been a very valuable partner. Um, I think it would be inappropriate to specul about, speculate about Capricorn's future um, and therefore whether there will be scope for us to, to partner with Capricorn in the future, to be honest, at this point. Um, second question, would you consider it possible uh, that after the conclusion of the drilling program, a maiden dividend could be announced? Uh, well, I think I've addressed that during uh, the presentation. And also the question three was about buying back shares. And again, um, I think we have uh, delivered a response to that question and provided uh, as detailed an update as we can um, on the drilling program to date. Um, the final question, question four that I received in advance of this presentation was, at the current valuation, should the company put itself up for sale? Um, if not, what are the timelines to demonstrate shareholder value before considering 
that option. Well, clearly, um, the buyback uh, program that was announced this morning um, emphasizes the, that the board believes the current market cap of the company substantially undervalues the company's existing asset base and opportunities to create additional value contained within the existing portfolio. So the near-term challenge for the board and the objective of the board is to demonstrate this potential and deliver growth in value for the benefit of all shareholders. So they're the four pre-submitted. Uh, um, now, Ash K has been uh, prolific in his questions. Uh, there's about five here. Um, just uh, give you a little bit of air time, Ash K. Um, what is the cost, and I'll hand this one over to you, Jeremy. Um, what is the cost of a low angle well in this four well program? Um, and does the production vary by individual well? And what is the production life? There's three questions there, but I know you're well capable of answering them, Jeremy. Thanks, Nick. And actually, thanks for the various questions. Um, certainly, we'll answer this and any that we don't get, so we'll provide published responses to later on. Um, the cost per low angle well in this four well program, we've seen um, due to increases in both services and steel, that cost for wells have gone from what was um, between, I would say, 1.6 or 1.8 to roughly 2 to $2.2 .2 million. It depends, however, on the depth of the well that you drill. For example, the third well that we are moving on to in the WD13 area um, is a relatively shallow well, and we expect the cost for that well to be in around $1.4 million. So hopefully that gives you an idea of range in terms of your standard costs, as well as for shallower wells. In terms of the expectation and for production from each of the wells, um, we would, as guided in the presentation, between 40 to 70 VOPD is the usual range that we'd expect. It does vary per individual well, but that's the usual range that we would tend to expect from drilling into the conventional reservoirs um, that are in the shallow areas. And by shallow, I mean 6,000 feet and shallower, depending on which field we drill into. That's why it's, what you see, um, bearing in mind that these fields have been on production since the 1960s and 1970s. Production life is, is an interesting question. Um, the wells come on um, at, at their production as guided, um, you know, between 40 to 70 barrels. And we have wells that have been producing for, for decades within our portfolio. So the life is, is very long, but of course, managing the production within the first three to five years is very important to be able to ensure we get the barrels recovered at the rate we determine so that we can get the returns, in particular, the payback period um, for the wells and make sure that the working capital cycle that we contemplate is achieved. And that's, that's important for replenishing the balance sheet. Um, and there's a, a last bit to, which, to the question that you put together, which um, goes as follows. Could you provide the production breakdown from the two low angle wells, which are guided at 200 to 250 um, BOPD? I'm not sure what where we refer to in terms of um, that guidance uh, for, for the two low angle wells, but we are expecting from these two low angle wells that will be perforated and brought onto production again within the, the 40 to 70 BOPD range. Um, thanks, Jeremy. Um, Ash K is also trying to get a steer on Q3 production um, and unaudited cash. Uh, in Q3. I'm not sure that we really want to uh, get into dividing production on a quarterly basis. I think we've given guidance both on uh, the uh, expectation for the full year and, and the uh, exit level. Um, so by definition, the fourth quarter, you would expect to be materially higher than the third quarter. Uh, but I'm not sure that we want to give any uh, specific skier on that, uh, Jeremy, unless you... Uh, are prepared to do so? No, Nick, not at this point in time. Ash, what we typically do uh, is to provide quarterly updates, and those updates are done in or around um, the middle of the month following a calendar quarter. So, for example, for quarter three, I would say in around the 15th to 20th of October, you can expect a quarterly operational update that will include production and on, on order to cash at that point in time, as well as an update on the drilling program um, during that period. Okay. Um, what is Ash K again? What is the chance of success for the horizontal and deeper wells 
Um, and there's also a question about production and reserve expectations. Um, uh, we can probably give uh, some information here, Jeremy, but obviously um, uh, I'll leave that over to you. Sure, thanks, Nick. Um, chance of success for the horizontal well is slightly different um, in terms of the horizontal well is actually going into an area that we drilled uh, a well in, in 2019. So we are, from a geological perspective, we are aware of um, the hydrocarbon being present and the level of production and some reservoir parameters. So the chance of success for the horizontal well is really around us in expanding our drilling capabilities and moving beyond being uh, you know, a low conventional driller into taking on a new technique such as a horizontal well. So the, 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 the risk there lies in our ability to drill and drill a horizontal leg of that well into the reservoir that we are that we contemplate in. And then being able to content, um, then being able to complete that in an efficient manner, so that we get the production. So the risk there is really more of a drilling and completion, stroke operational risk. And on the deeper well, that's not where we're testing the, the geological model more. And um, the chance of success there is, is really across us looking at the reservoir reservoirs in the Jacobin prospect. Um, we're actually looking to target three different reservoirs, and each of them have their own varying. Um, risks associated with it from a geological standpoint. Um, the combined chance of success of finding um, hydrocarbons that are commercial are, uh, in this instance, you know, relatively robust, certainly north of, of 50%, um, and encouraging to, to the board in terms of being able to make an investment decision. What are the expected production and reserve expectations? Um, we've given to the horizontal well. You know, sort of that range between 100 to 200 um, BOPD from the um, the, the depot well. The, the, the range there, again, dependent on success, can be anything from 200 to 700 BOPD based on what we're looking at. But we're not going to know until we drill and understand what the parameters of the reservoirs are and the ability to deliver if we can find hydrocarbon bearing reservoirs. So I, I am hopefully emphasizing the risk associated with the depot well. Nick, I'll handle it to you. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe if we give um, somebody else a crack at this point. I um, appreciate, Ash, that you've got a lot of questions here. Um, what is, uh, again, Jeremy, I'm sure you can give some observation here. Um, what is the impact, the dollar impact of the reduced hedging in, in the second half, assuming constant production, which obviously production will not be constant, but um, the impact of, of reduced hedging in the second quarter, we give any guidance on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, what in terms of the hedging percentages, so the, the, we've hedged 58% of production in half one of this year, and going into half two of this year, you it, it's reduced to 46%, and actually only 30% of the production is limited in terms of upside. So therefore, um, the, the percentage of production goes from 58% limited to upside through purchases of calls, call options, to 30% um, in half two of this year. In terms of dollar impact, um, the, the, there's an explanation within the, um, the interims that we set out and suggest that you know, during the earlier part of this year, we would have recorded in our own $7.7 .7 million worth of, um, of hedging, either cost paid or accrued. And towards the end of the year, the total amount should be in around just over 12 million US dollars. That was based on looking at the future value of the hedges or the reliability associated with the hedges for half two as at the 30th of June um, 2022, based on where the oil price um, was at the end of August and taking a, a fair value at that point in time. Um, what we see is the annual exposure should reduce from just over $12 million to just over $10 million. So you're looking at a, a difference in, in half two, where half one is maybe about $7.7 .7 million, half two being somewhere in the vicinity of you know two to $3 million. And then with uh, 2023, no hedges in place. Nick, I'll hand over to you. Yeah, there's, there's, there are several questions about um, fiscal reform, um, expectations, hopes, fears, um, in the budget. Um, so, um, you know, I think it's fairly, I think 
think all we can say at this point, and I think I made it the point during the presentation, that um, you know we've um, we've tried to um, clearly there is um, uh, very uh, economic rationale for um, for fiscal reform in Trinidad, um, and we would certainly like to think that the minister. Um, would be true to his word in terms of uh, suggesting that uh, there will be fiscal reform um, at some point in the near future. But we certainly can't rely on it. And Trinity is, uh, as I said, taking its own destiny, uh, its destiny into its own hands by, um, certainly in the context of Galeota, looking at developing the Tupi reserves, etc., uh, rather than being uh, totally reliant on uh, fiscal reform in Trinidad. Um, but we're pretty clear that if there was reform, uh, it would enable the government and the uh, minister uh, to achieve his objective of getting more oil out of the ground over a limited time frame. So, um, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that we would um, we're certainly not holding our breath. And given high oil prices and certainly uh, um, the trends around the world for uh, tightening uh, uh, fiscal terms uh, rather than easing them um, against the current backdrop. Um, but the economic rationale and logic is certainly there uh, for the government to do something. But as I say, we're not holding our breath. Jeremy, is there anything that you would want to add to that in terms of, um, you know, our current views on, on, on fiscal reform? Yes, thanks, Nick. I think, you know, in, in points about fiscal reform, I certainly echo what I wanted to draw reference to is the, you know, the share buyback program and the discussion of cash returns to shareholders um, during the course of next year is built on the business as it stands right now and doesn't contemplate any fiscal reform and neither does it contemplate um, any of the deeper wells being successful. So, you know, we built this um, return to shareholders. It's certainly going to start off from a modest perspective in, in terms of the, the level of return. But in the event that those are successful in terms of any fiscal reform or the deeper well being successful, then that will allow us to calibrate upwards what we're currently thinking of. OK, the, 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 thank you, Jeremy. There are a number of questions here uh, seeking a steer on average production for next year. Now, clearly, um, you know, to a certain degree, that depends upon the wells that we put into the budget, um, and that will be finalized over the next month or two. Um, but um, I think we've given sufficient steer uh, to uh, investors in this presentation and to the market more recently, um, that in a success case, um, you know, we are looking for production to, um, to rise quite materially uh, during the course of next year, obviously subject to uh, the success or otherwise of, of the more, um, uh, non-conventional wells that we'll be drilling uh, later this year and into early next year. But Jeremy, do, is there anything else that you would like to say in addition to that? No, Nick, I think you've covered it um, quite well. Thank you. No, it's it's very it's very difficult at this stage to um, I think or to speculate. Um, we've obviously got an idea, but I don't really want to uh, put that into a formal number into the marketplace at this point. Um, uh, there's a comment on hedging going forward. Um, from ONT. Hedges have been costly in this period. What is the strategy going forward? Um, and I think the question is, you know, are we or would we contemplate looking at hedging strategies into the future? And I'll allow you to, to answer that question, Jeremy. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can answer yeah. it if you want, but I, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd give you the easy ones. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we've hedged, we've been hedging since 2017. It's perhaps most pertinent to everyone now, in particular um, investors, because of the, the exposure, where the, how high the oil price has unpredictably gone during the course of this year, most notably in, um, in half one. Um, I think hedging is still an important tool for us from a financial standpoint. Certainly, if we want to maintain a certain level of free cash flow to be able to maintain production at whatever given level um, that, for a particular year, as well as return cash to shareholders, Contemplating hedging um, should be part of that discussion. Whether we choose to hedge um, would depend on the instruments that will be available to us, the cost of those instruments, and the underlying risk in delivering the business model for that year. So 
I think hedging will remain part of the discussion. Whether we put a hedge into place in a given period or not will depend on the factors as I've outlined previously. Yeah, and I think just to just to add to that, I mean, the whole purpose of hedging is to allow us to invest through the cycle and protect the level of investment um, that we need to um, continue to enable the business to grow. So uh, it, 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 it should and will be part of our consideration going forward. But at this stage, I think uh, um, certainly there's nothing in the, uh, uh, in the plans for, for, uh, as of 2023 at this point in time. Um, okay, I'm just, I'm literally just going down the list here. Um, question on CapEx from Ash K, who's uh, featuring very heavily again. Um, could you please go over CapEx for 22 in detail? Or I think more importantly, could we just focus on the remaining, remaining CapEx uh, in the second half of the year broadly? Question, Jeremy. The, um, the remaining capex for the rest of the year. I mean, as at this point in time, um, I, I don't have a, a definitive number per se. But we, what we guided um, was that the drilling program would cost us somewhere between fourteen to seventeen million dollars. So I expect yeah. that that drilling program will be effected over the course of this year and go into quarter one um, of next year as well where we commence drilling the depot well and then bring that on to production. So expect over um, those three quarters, which would be quarter two, sorry, quarter three and quarter four, 22, and then quarter one of 23, to see somewhere in the vicinity of CapEx spent on drilling to be about 14 to $17 million or so, perhaps airing, edging more towards the, the 17 million, given the, the impact of inflation that we've seen. Otherwise in that, um, there's a, a significant level of um, expenditure um, already being put into place um, in half one of this year in relation to recompletions, in relation to infrastructure asset integrity, as well as spending time and effort on the, the technical side of the business, which is essentially looking at deeper prospects, looking at Galiota, looking at other areas and coming up with product first to, to eventually to drill and then monetize. So I, I believe for the cash flow, we were somewhere around 6.3 million. I would say probably by, by the end of this year, we'll probably spend another, probably around that up to close to 10 to $11 million in addition to the drilling. Okay. Um, there's a question regarding ABM 151 um, and an update on, on, on that, Jeremy. I know, um, well, this was a topic of conversation at the board last week, so um, maybe you can just uh, say a few words on ABM 151. Sure, Nick. I'm just um, looking for the um, the question to make sure. So the question, the question, I will. Uh, I yeah. yeah. Um, as recently as the 21st of May, Trinity were conveying uh, ABM 151 had the potential to deliver 175 plus barrels a day, and four or to five hundred thousand was set aside for the reactivation. Could you please provide an update on the same? Absolutely. Um, AVM 151 remains um, you know, part of the, the plan that we're going to deliver this year. It, it was intended to be brought on stream by the middle of this year, but we've had a significant amount of delays in terms of getting um, various regulatory um, approvals on that. Um, we are making headway, and the intent is to bring AVM 151 onto production um, by the end of this year, if not in early January. Um, and the, the production potential, as you've outlined there, is, is certainly... Um, you know, in or around that range um, with associated gas um, within the Brighton field. So um, ABM 151 re remains a, a low-risk reactivation of a well. So it's not even a, a recompletion where we are testing new um, zones for new oil or even drilling an ICP. It is a, a low-risk reactivation of a large well that was shut in due to integrity issues um, a few years ago and it's bringing that back on stream. So certainly remains on the plan. Okay, and um, a question from Colin L. Could I request pertinent and appropriate updates on drilling to the markets? Question mark. Communication is vital. The market sadly is impatient, um, uh, unlike some of us. Well, I think uh, just just for everybody's benefit, um, this 
the whole question of, of regular updates uh, to markets on individual wells um, has been a hot topic at board meetings over the last uh, few months. Um, I think it's fair to say that, that Trinity has never in the past provided updates on conventional wells uh, on the understanding that, you know, historically we've drawn quite a few of them and individually uh, they do not tend to uh, move the needle. And so uh, the, we run the risk of sort of um, getting a few yawns every time we, uh, we issue on conventional wells. But I think it is fair to say that the board recognises the importance um, of the horizontal wells and certainly the deeper wells and that um, you should expect uh, some uh, information, more regular information uh, in respect of the progress of, of the needle, of, of the sort of wells that potentially could move the needle. Um, Jeremy, is there anything else you, you want to say on that at this stage? No, Nick, you've covered that well. Thank you. And hopefully, Colin, that um, uh, at least um, answers your question par uh, partially. Um, uh, ONT, is there any risk to the balance of VAT refund or are you expecting settlement shortly? Well, this is a, uh, a recurring question, but um, Jeremy, do you want to have a stab at that? Certainly. Um, Owen, uh, we, we don't... Um... We are expecting settlement as to the timing of it, being able to confirm shortly or wherever uh, it's been variable. But at no point in time we've ever not received that from the government or had any returns that we, we've submitted um, being subject to scrutiny and reduced or the government not paid. So they've always made good on the debt that they owe to us, but it has been um, untimely in most instances. Um, and the government has recognized that. And at least two instances, in the last 18 months, the government has um, put in play the ability for them to accelerate return the VAT returns um, to, to the arm industry. Okay. Um, Ash K, again, what are the ranges being considered for the dividend amount? Uh, it's a very good question. Um, and clearly, um, uh, what I can say at this point is that any dividend that gets declared um, the key point is it has to be sustainable um, and it has to be looked at in the context of maintaining um, the minimum capital that we require to fund the business. Um, but clearly we will articulate uh, our plans in detail um, at the beginning of, uh, with, well, with the final results for this year. Um, but I, I think if you just have in mind that the dividend will be sustainable um, and uh, we'll be set at a level where, um, you know, we're not going to be cutting it at the drop of a hat, um, then that's an important point to bear in mind. Okay. Um, let me have a look here. Gosh, there's... Um, uh, to be honest with you, I think the rest of these we can, uh, we can address uh, in writing. Um, but... Uh, Basically, I think what we can do at this point, Mark, is to hand back to you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as I say, any others we'll, we'll answer in writing um, uh, in the next couple of days. Absolutely, Nick. And thank you to both of you for your uh, time this afternoon. Thank you to everybody for your engagement. You really have received an awful lot of questions. And I think we'd be here for the rest of today if we carried on uh, going through them. So, so, Nick, Jeremy, thank you for updating investors. Um, I know investor feedback is important to you both. I'll shortly redirect investors on the call to give you their thoughts and their expectations. Uh, but I wonder before doing so, if I may, Nick, just ask you for a few closing comments. And then, as I say, investors can give you their feedback. Yes, thanks, Mark. Well, well, look, um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for attending uh, the call today. Um, I hope it comes across that we, as a board and as a management team, think that we're at a very exciting inflection point for the company um, for all sorts of reasons, operational, um, returning cash to shareholders, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, certainly Jeremy and I and Julian and others um, in the management team, uh, look forward to keeping you informed over the months um, ahead. Thank you very much.
That's great. Nick, Jeremy, thank you very much indeed for updating investors this afternoon. Can I please ask investors not to close the session as we'll now automatically redirect you for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Trinity Exploration and Production PLC, I'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. Good afternoon to you all.